Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at syntax on the SAT writing and language portion. As always, we're going to be looking at five questions. We're going to explain each one of them and let's look at the intricacies of this topic to help you ace the SAT writing section. If you like these videos or find them informative, please be sure to like and subscribe. And with that, let's get started on our first question. Here it is. The Orfish, a serpentine deep sea fish, has long been featured in Japanese folk folklore as a predictor of earthquakes. Their predictive power comes from living close to the ocean floor. With that proximity to the sea bottom, oarfish can pick up the sensitive vibrations of tectonic plate movement. All right, let's see what we have here. All right. So we're asked to combine the sentences at the underlined portion. All right, so it's going to be right here. That's where we want to combine the sentences. And uh, we're given our four answer choices, each of which combines the sentences, but we're wa we want the one that most effectively does it. Now, if you remember from, a, from around two videos ago when we were talking about precision and concision, we mentioned that the answer is, that's correct is going to be the shortest answer that works. So we look at the shortest answer that works. So usually we can look at the shortest answer first and work our way up from there. The shortest answer here is choice A. And it says, their predictive power comes from living close to the ocean floor, where they can pick up the sensitive vibrations of tectonic plate movement. All right. So this sentence, let's see if this sentence works at effectively combining sentences. All right, so it doesn't have any extraneous information. It doesn't have any extraneous words or anything. Right, they say their predictive power comes from being close to the ocean floor, where they can pick up the sensitive vibration of tectonic plate movement. It flows smoothly. Right, there is a cause and there is effect. There is an effect. There is nothing in between that adds more words. Like here, it says that proximity to the sea bottom, when you already said you're living close to the ocean floor. Right, that seems like repetition. You have living close to the ocean floor, and then you have close proximity to the sea bottom. That's what it repeats. Close to the ocean floor, proximity to the sea bottom. Right? That's all of these have that repetition in them. But this says living close to the ocean floor just once. It doesn't have it, something else anywhere else. So this doesn't have repetition in it, so it's the shortest answer, the most concise answer. It doesn't add any extraneous information, no extraneous words. So this is the most effective one. And we can move on to the next question. Let's keep going. The Bridge Foundation awarded the Early Childhood Center a grant. The one condition of the grant was that the center be required to report back quarterly with parent and teacher surveys. And again, we're asked to effectively combine the two sentences. All right, let's see how we can go about doing this question. So we can look at our first answer choice. Let's let's start. Let's ignore the. The main clauses, right? The British Foundation awarded the Early Childhood Center grant. The center would be required to report back quarterly with parent and teacher surveys. We know that that's going to be there for every single one, but let's look at the connections, right? Let's look at where the sentences are connected and what what's there. So in choice A, we have a, a grant, and the one condition of the grant was that. Choice B was a, a grant, but there was a condition that the British Foundation and stated. This one was the condition of the grant. That it wasn't that the Bridge Foundation awarded the Early Childhood Center was that the center would be required to report back quarterly and on and on. And then uh, the last one is the Bridge Foundation awarded the Early Childhood Center a grant on the condition that the center be required to report back quarterly. All right, so A and B seem to be a bit too wordy, right? So we have a grant and the one condition of the grant, a grant, but there was a condition that the Bridge Foundation stated. Those two seem to be slightly too wordy. So let's keep looking at choices C and D. So here we have the condition of the grant that was awarded, was that. And we have the, a, a, a grant was awarded on the condition that. Right, both of those are pretty concise, right? Neither of those, like, add any words. Like, like if you look at either of these, right, there's, no, there's not really a way to get rid of some words without, without just, like, moving the entire thing. Right, without changing a bunch of things. So which one, which one seems to work the best? 
Well, we're trying to combine the sentences. So we want that it's so it still should start with the bridge foundation and still should end with the surveys. So I see does not start with the bridge foundation, it starts with the condition of the ramp. That's why that one is wrong and choice D is our answer. Additionally, we see that choice D is a bit shorter than choice C. It really shouldn't matter at this point, but since we know since both these could be the answer and they look to be similar, go with the shorter one, and that is our answer. Let's keep going. Mangroves are the amphibians of the plant world. They straddle the land and sea with roots that extend into salt water and house a variety of wildlife. And again, kind of combine the two sentences. Alright, so let's look at choice A. We have mangroves are the amphibians of the plant world. We can skip that part, right? Because it's going to be there everywhere. And it says mangrove plants straddle the land and sea, and on and on. That one says mangrove plants again. Seems to be a bit too wordy. Let's look at choice B. We have they are they they're the amphibians of the plant world and these amphibious plants. Again, kind of seems a bit too wordy. You can just say and them or they or something like that. And then choice C is they straddle the land and sea. That is like exactly what we should be looking at, right? It's the shortest one. And it says mangroves are the amphibians of the plant world. They straddle the land and sea with roots that extend to salt water and house a variety of wildlife. No extra words, it's the shortest one, it flows smoothly, it doesn't repeat the plants or the amphibians or the mangroves. So we can take that answer and then you see in choice B, we say, and these plants straddle the land and sea. Tiny bit longer since it says, and these plants. They is more concise than that, so that's our answer. Let's keep going. Alright, question four. Since the 1990s, fishermen in Panama have been clearing mangrove trees for firewood and lumber. Mangrove deforestation that threatens pygmy sloth that depend on mangroves for their food and habitat. Alright, so we can skip the main clauses again and we just look at the connection. We see that, see that choice A says, it says uh, they've been clearing the mangrove trees and that threat, which threatens the pygmy sloth. And then that's it, the which thread and pigging slots is the connection. It seems decently concise. Let's keep looking at our choices. The next one is four firewood and lumber and clearing those trees for firewood and lumber. Whoa. Whoa. Did you have to say clearing those trees for firewood and lumber twice? Seems to be a bit too much. Let's get rid of that one. That one, like, you don't need to say that twice. We get the point. All right, choice C. Fishermen in Panama have been clearing mangrove trees for firewood and lumber threatening pygmy slots that depend on mangroves for their food and habitat. That also seems to be pretty concise, right? It just says, it, it connects it with just the word threatening, right? So we can leave that one there and we'll come back to it. Last one, the fishermen have been clearing mangrove trees for fire and lumber. This deforestation threatens, well, do you need to say this defor deforestation instead of just this threatens? That seems to be a bit too wordy. Let's go to that one. So now we have just choices A and C, and let's see which one is going to be correct. So A is shorter, right? We can see that first off. But let's think a bit more, a bit deeper into what is look what is here. So in choice A, since the 1990s, fishermen in Panama have been clearing mangrove trees, which threaten pygmy sloths depending on mangroves for their food and habitat. Well, okay, the first thing I see is that they kind of took out the firewood and lumber part. That's a no-no. You don't want to take that out. But if you're combining the sentences, you want to keep the information in there. You don't want to take information out. And second of all, I see that which threaten pygmy slots depending on mangroves for their food and habitat. That is incorrect grammar. It says it should be which threaten pygmy slots who depend on mangroves, something like that. But depending on mangroves is incorrect grammar, and it took out information, so that's also going to be incorrect. Choice to see, it leaves the information in there. It makes sense that that depend on mangroves. That all works out. And let's move on to the next question. Due to their ability to resist wind, round tents are called yurts. Round tents called yurts are common living accommodations on the Eurasian Sea. 
The steep is a dry, flat grassland that experiences extreme gales. Even before we look at our answer choices, just knowing from what we've done in the past couple of questions, I'm going to estimate that I think the answer is going to be something like, due to their ability to resist wind, round tents called yurts are common living accommodation on the Eurasian steep, which is a dry, flat grassland that experiences extreme gales. Right, so in answer choice A, we say which in addition is, we don't need the word in addition. And choice B, there's just a dash. I mean, that seems to work. I mean, which is A and a dash, it's kind of the same thing, right? It still sets up the next clause. Choice C is saying, repeating the steep again. And then choice D, common combination on the Eurasian steep, a place comp uh, comprised of a dry, flat grassland that experiences extreme gales. Well, that, that, that seems to be missing a comma in here to connect the two clauses. So that seems to be incorrect, which means that our answer is just choice B. Well, choice B is our answer, and we're done. All right, so as you can see on this topic, it's mainly just combining sentences, right? Knowing how to use those transition words between sentences. And how we do that is we just find the most concise one, the, the shortest answer that works. We get rid of the extraneous information, we try to find the thing that flows the smoothest, and that is it for the syntax, that is it for this topic, and I'll see you next time.